Hey guys, what's up, how's it going? Welcome back for another video on the channel. Like usual, I'll be giving you guys a quick little update on our portfolio. I'll show you guys how our stocks and our portfolio has been doing for the past month or so. And the focus for today's video is gonna be my TFSA. So like usual, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you guys wanna support the channel, there are some links to Wealth Simple Trade. You guys can sign up, create an account, deposit $1, and you'll guys get 25 bucks deposited for free inside your account. And there also is a link to Blossom Social where you guys can see all my stuff Stocks, all my holdings completely for free if you guys download their app which is completely free to do so and takes a couple minutes to sign up anyways guys let's get started let's take a peek at the portfolio and let's see our stocks I've been doing for the past couple weeks all right guys what's up how's it going welcome to the update part of the video I'll give you guys a quick little overview of all of our accounts that we have here in Wealth Simple and then we'll dive inside my TFSA since that's going to be the focus of today's video. Um, so quick little update here as you guys probably have noticed if you've logged in there's been a few changes on the dashboard and the user interface of Wealth Simple. I don't know 100% if I like all the changes yet, but um, some interesting new things that they've added here. So um, if you've watched the previous videos, the biggest difference here is gonna be at the top here. We have our all time, uh, this is basically all of our accounts added up together that I have on my Wealth Simple uh, trade account. So this is all of our accounts added together. And then on the bottom here, they changed this all time return to basically reflect all of the accounts that I have I've ever opened since I first started on Wealth Simple. All of your closed accounts. This is everything added up together. So if you've watched my previous videos, this looks like it might jumped up a lot, but this is because now they're factoring in like my previous TFSAs, my previous personal accounts, and all that. So this gives a true representation of my all-time return since I first started investing using Wealth Simple. So I do like that they did do that because that's something that they did have on the mobile mobile app, but they didn't have on the desktop app for some reason. So now they've added that in there, so we can see my all-time return since I first started investing on Wealthsimple and you can see a nice pretty significant growth just pretty consistent and uh, as of recently things have been going uh, quite well with the markets but uh, let's dive in here let's do a quick little overview of all my accounts here this I don't know 100% if I like this user interface um, I'm just kind of trying to learn it um, and I, there's a few things I don't know so if I click on a few things and I screw things up just to let you guys know uh, that I'm getting used to it I also noticed that the new user face is a little bit more clunky and slower and I'm not a big fan of complex user faces I like simple fast easy to manage ones but we'll kind of see how things go um, so here's my accounts here on the left side um, nothing too big uh, going on here we have the TFSA we have the RRSB as you guys know and then going down here the actual new account I've opened is the first home savings account I did open one and I am going to be putting a little bit of cash in here or there. Um, it's not going to be anything big. It's going to be a growth oriented account, of course, uh, because I want that first home savings account to grow uh, to use for a down payment for a house within the next, I don't know, a couple years, maybe give or take. We'll kind of see how things go. Um, but it, because I've been contrib contributing to my RRSB, I think it kind of makes sense to maximize the first home savings account first since I'm not a, ho a homeowner. And then later on, we can dip into the RRSB um, and kind of save that room for later on if we need it kind of thing. Uh, but the TFSA, we're jumping here. Um, this is the biggest account. This has always been the one I focused on uh, since I first started. And that's kind of going to go over the returns here really quickly. Um, and you can also see we can also switch the currency types and stuff like that. Um, I don't have USD in here. It's just all Canadian uh, I have to keep things simple. But anyways, we have $134,000, $135,000 inside the TFSA. Uh, this specific account is up 32%. Uh, all time and that's about $33,000 so it's it's done quite well over the years um, and this is over a couple years I think I started this specific account in 2020 um, the my overall investing journey did start though in about I'd, I'd say I think it was like March of 2019 or so so this is March 2019 up until today's current date and then if we go back inside the TFSA um, this is from 2020 uh, going forward so and again it's just been consistent so um, the one day return here now for some reason they change this where this doesn't update on the one month three month one year return we can see it in terms of the graph but we don't see it in terms of numbers so hopefully they change that um, that's a little bit annoying uh, but nonetheless we can see the different holdings here uh, we scroll down we see um, nothing too crazy here I'm a big fan of ETFs as you guys know I keep things simple with the ETFs so if we scroll down to VDY and VFE, these are the big ETFs I hold. So VFE for growth, VDY for dividend plus growth, uh, Canadian exposure. And then we have some individual companies. We have XCI here, a small holdings of that. That's just a dividend fund I have in mind a little bit, but it's not, it's nothing major. Uh, and then we have some of the individual stocks I have like uh, uh, TD, TELUS, Fortis, 
CNR, CNQ, ATD, and that's pretty much it. Inside my RRSB, I do have a few other accounts as well. Uh, some changes to the layout here. We can see the total value here on the left side. We can see the today's price, and then we can see the all-time return. I don't know if all-time return includes dividends or not. I, I'm not too sure. I don't think it does. Um, but the all-time return up here does include dividends. So I'm going to have to get confirmation on that. Uh, but I, th I know this number includes dividends. It's your all-time return. I don't know if this does. Uh, personally, we can kind of scroll down here. I don't think it does because I'm not in the negative for Fortis for all time returns. And same with Telus. Um, I'm not negative minus 20% <coughs> for that stock. So I think I don't, I'm, 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 I'm going to say it doesn't include dividends here, but here's the stocks I hold. Again, if you guys want to see all the stocks on my TFSA, uh, check out my profile on Blossom. There's a link in the description of today's video. Where you guys can see all my stocks I hold. You can see my trades on there and it's completely free for everybody to access. So I want to do a quick little update on the buys inside my portfolio and kind of what I've been doing lately uh, for the past month or so. Once again, we're going to be focusing on my accounts in today's video, my TFSA specifically. But the cool thing is here, we can see all the different accounts that I have are going to be organized on here. Again, I don't know if I like this user interface. It's a little bit tricky, um, but we're going to have to get used to it and see how things go. Um, so here we have all of our buys here. So once again, I buy my big ETFs and I've been buying some individual stocks. I'll give you guys a quick little update on the markets overall, um, a month overview uh, a little bit later on in the video, but here's all the buys I'm in mind. So nothing crazy. Here's my actual, I do have a managed account with like a hundred bucks I've been tracking. Uh, maybe I'll give you guys an update on some point on Wealth Simple Invest. So that's what these ZFL and, and QCN, those are the ETFs that they manage. It was more of a case study, but I haven't really been updating it too much. As most of you guys know, I buy my own stocks and whatnot. But here's the buys for March. They kind of organize this uh, by date. So I've been putting any free cash I have, give or take, into my funds. I've also been putting money inside my fiance's TFSA. Uh, because we have tons of contribution room on there. But any other free cash I'm putting inside my RRSBs and I'm putting inside my um, I'm putting inside my uh, first home savings account is going to be the next goal. All these uh, buys inside my TFSA are the dividends. So you see like um, some of these purchases are the dividends from my TFSA because my TFSA um, con contribution room is maxed out. Uh, so it's just dividends that are going in there and they're compounding growing. And of course, all of that's going to be tax free. And I will do a video soon probably in my next update where I go over some of the taxes and, and give you guys an update on um, how to kind of be a little more tax efficient as I've been learning to do some cool things even this year. It's, you're always constantly learning, which is a cool thing about finances and investing. So here's a quick update of the TSX heat map, which is going to give us a quick little overview of, of the Canadian markets. We'll just focus on the Canadian markets. As you guys know, the U.S. markets have been doing pretty good, uh, but I don't really track a lot of the U.S. markets. I just buy the S&P 500 and I go with that. Uh, so I'm not going to give you guys an update on that, but what I will do is an update on the Canadian markets. So here's the one day return. Obviously markets are closed, so nothing's going on now because of the holidays. Um, actually, that's the reason why I did this video because I had a little bit of free time. As you guys might have noticed, I've been a little bit busy lately. So my updates will probably come maybe once or twice a month for the time being. Um, and I have been sick the past couple of weeks, as you guys can probably tell. Um, finally starting to get my voice back. I did lose my voice for a little while. Uh, but nonetheless, things are going good, getting better. So I decided to do a video and add some free time. Um, here's the seven day returns of the TSX. So we did see a little bit of a jump back across most markets. A lot of basic materials doing pretty good. Um, some energy stocks or utility stocks doing okay, um, as well as the banks doing not too bad. Um, but everything else kind of like doing whatever. 30 day return, however, is a bit of a different story. Overall, the past 30 days, the Canadian markets are up quite a bit. Um, basic materials doing really well. Once again, our utility companies doing really well and the banks. We see a nice little jump up from the banks. Uh, actually surprised to see TD is actually the lowest performing bank. Um, I don't know specifics about the banks. There's probably reasons why with interest rates and different things. Um, but we can see RBC, um, BMO, actually BMO being one of the better ones. And then some of the financial companies like Manulife doing pretty well. Uh, but that's really interesting. A lot of some, as well as some of the consumer companies, consumer stocks, some of them have done well, depends on which ones we're talking about, but overall, uh, pretty good uh, return for the Canadian markets. And then let's go over the last 180 days. And once again, nice little recovery from the Canadian markets. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next couple months uh, to the year. But I do think we should see a little bit of a jump up for the Canadian markets, specifically because they've just been not doing well over the past years. I think we're about due to one. But of course, we nobody really knows what's going to happen. But just a quick little update on the market, specifically Canadian markets, in case you guys are wondering.
And of course, since dividend investing is one of the big focuses on this channel and always has been, I'll give you guys an update on the dividends um, year to date inside all of our accounts. So here I'm using passive to track all of our accounts and we can see all the different dividend payments. So in January, you made a total of $671 inside our stocks. And once again, this is like 100% tax free. It's inside of our TFSAs, a little bit inside of our RSBs, and then going in the future, it will be a little bit inside of our first home savings accounts. But $671 across all of our accounts for January. February was a little bit less at 380, and then March kind of being a bit of a jump up again at 568. You guys can see the different stocks, um, the dividends here, the tickers, uh, which the different dividends, right? And then we can scroll down here and see the total dividends from the different funds. So obviously VDY, HYLD, and then you know my biggest holdings as well, some covered calls, and then our dividend growth stocks here at the bottom. So all of them doing pretty solid here. Um, and it's about 1,000, I don't know if you guys can see the number at the bottom here, but that's $1,619 in terms of dividends um, and the monthly average is about $534. So it's been pretty consistent. We can go over the one year return and kind of see how the dividends have been consistently growing year over date. Um, so once again, March of last year, we hit $231. Um, so we're definitely gonna hit more this year. Um, you know, and, and we're just consistently growing. We can go all time as well and see kind of by year. In January of 2020, our first year of investing inside this TFSA, we made $152 in 2021 and went up to 1,236 in 2022. So before we end today's video, I just want to do a quick little update on some cool things I've been doing. A lot of you guys requested to bring back the living off our dividends kind of spreadsheet, which was a basically like a case study where we took some of our dividends and we pretended to budget and kind of show how um, just a couple little, you know, if you wanted to, um, and going into the long term when we do eventually use our dividends, we can kind of use them in our everyday expenses It's also a way for you guys to learn to budget and kind of just enjoy things from a different perspective um, Because it's easy to lose track of your progress and whatnot, especially since investing is a long-term game You know if you're at it for a couple years, you can kind of lose sight of how far you come and whatnot um, So here's a spreadsheet that I made. It's very basic um, Here's the total dividends that we made since we first started investing. I can't remember when I I made this earlier this month, so it's not 100% up to date. Um, so just kind of bear with me with that. But I decided to track our total dividends, which is about $10,000, $11,000. Keep in mind, this doesn't include stock growth. As you guys can see, I'm big into stock growth and the growth of our portfolios have made the significant amount of our returns um, over about like, what was about like, like 30 to $40,000. So quite a bit of money there, but I do like to track the dividends because it's consistent. You can track it and you can kind of predict it. So, and it's tangible. It's not like it's gonna go up and down. Your dividends are always there. You're getting paid in actual money. It's kind of more easy to grab onto that, right? It's more structure. So that's why I kind of like focusing on that. Um, so our total dividends is $10,544. Our three month average is 476. Um, again, this number might not be 100% correct depending on, on when I put this together, but it's around 500 bucks. And then last 12 months, we made about $5,000. Again, depending on when I track that. Uh, might be a little bit different, uh, but here's our purchases. So we're going to start tracking our purchases for um, things we don't need. And we're going to try to keep our purposes underneath our monthly um, average is kind of the idea here. And the first thing we're going to do is track our big purchases that we make. So I bought some totes to organize things. Um, I bought them. They're about $100. I think they're about 15 bucks each. Um, so I bought a bunch of giant totes to organize things um, because I'm, I'm trying to get more organized and stuff like that. Um, and which I'll show you guys later, uh, but we're putting things together, organizing things. And the other thing in terms of our monthly costs we're going to start doing is start making some recreational budgets again. We're going to make budgets for our groceries and stuff. And what I'll be doing is in these updates, showing you guys kind of how we're saving money, how we're being frugal and how our dividends are helping us pay for some basic things. So the first thing we did is I like movies. You know, I, we have movie night one day a week, usually one to two days a week, but we kind of are picky one day a week where we put money towards movies. So we spent $32 in DVDs, we bought three DVDs. Some of the movies we're using are older movies that we have, some of them are buying new ones. Uh, so I made a cool movie list where I basically went online and I started looking up lists, I started adding movies, I, and basically what I'm doing is I'm putting our own movies we have, movies I like, movies I grew up on, as well as some new movies. And every single month we're buying a couple new movies and then we're watching them and I'm tracking them. So every basically movie night we have, I'm going through, I'm picking a random movie and we're watching them. And you guys might recognize, you might not. Uh, the green ones are the one we watched so far and then I put the year so that you know we can remember when we watch them and maybe we can rewatch them over time. Uh, but we've been buying DVDs and we've been watching some of these movies uh, and it's been really fun, really cool to watch new ones, but as well as watch some old ones uh, that I've watched over time. And again, these lists are lists I'm finding online. 
of what people are voting to be like the best movies so we can kind of see some cool things here um, as well as some my own stuff as well like some of the movies I grew up on some of the ones I've enjoyed and uh, it's been a great time so that's something we're doing uh, with our dividends and then next month maybe we'll start tracking our gro grocery list and whatnot but anyways guys it's a cool little thing to show you guys uh, some cool things because a lot of you guys like the dividend spreadsheet and over time as we add more purchases add more add more things this will start to fill up and we can see how um, you know even something simple as making an extra 500 bucks a month can you know if you use it correctly you can have a lot of fun with that uh, and you can be frugal and learn how to save your money and budget correctly at the same time but anyways guys that's it for today's video take care hope you guys enjoyed it let me know what you guys think in the comments sorry i haven't been active like i said i've been really busy i've been working uh quite a bit i did get sick for the last week or two um so i'm just kind of doing these videos in my spare time but anyways let me know what you guys think take care have yourself a good one and i'll see you guys later